Right, video today, we've got some bonging going on. Sat nav, Range Rover L322. So we're in our Range Rover L322 sat nav. And this is the, I think they call it the Mark IV, isn't it, Tyler? I don't know quite what it is, but it's the one with the touch screen. But it doesn't work if you're Tyler, apparently. What's wrong with your fingers, Tyler? Doesn't like me. Don't like me either, look. Or not very touchy screen, as the case may be. What's going on here? Oh. oh, there you go. Oh, so we've got a map DVD read error. Oh, or was that just an intermittent error? It's, it's back mm. up and happy now, is it? Let's turn it on and off. Right, anyway, so we're going to show you how to upgrade the DVD map disc in your... We're going to show you where it is, how to upgrade it. But this won't work for the earlier one, so you'll see what the buttons look like on this. And this is the touch screen, and we can go like that. And, um, so we're going to put a disc in. We're going to show you how to do that. Well, so we're going we're to explain the difference between the DVD player. Oh, it's got a bit of an error. So good job. Right, let's go and have a look where it is and what it's all about. Right, so you obviously got to go to the back of your car. There you go. And it lives in this corner here. So Tyler's going to show us. So in the back, you've got this little quite easy. You don't need any tools. Just pull that little carpet side panel out. And then in there, we've got what looks like a 1980s hi-fi stack system. Check that out. Look at all those. You won't remember those, were you, Tyler? I wasn't born. You wasn't born. When were you born? 1999. 1999. Goodness me. Right. Um, so, yeah, we've got your phone module on the top, if I point to the right place. And then you've got your this, this thing here, this DVD player. This is where the map data is stored so it's stored on a dvd it's not stored on a hard disk or anything and then we've got the cd multi changer so we can whip this unit out so do you want to show us how to whip that out tyler so it's got so oh, oh okay yeah eject the disc that's a good idea sorry i meant to take the whole unit out but no let's eject the disc even better so if you slide that thing over to unlock like tyler's done and you've got to have your ignition on and press the eject button is it having to think about it they're a bit clunky, these old systems, aren't they? Come on. It's whirring. It's trying to do something, isn't it? And you've got press and hold. Ah, uh, press and hold. Look, right. So there we go. Original CD. Origi look at that. So that's the original DVD. And it's got a year on there. Look. It's got... Hold on, it'll have a year. Because it's 2000, isn't it? Goodness me. Where does it say? I can't see for looking. 2004, we got some date down there. So you won't be able to tell what year disc you've got in your sat nav screen by looking at the system there's no about this disc information the only way you're going to do it is to fire the actual disc out of this little slot here and have a look what it's gone right now we have several discs here don't we tyler so do you want to show us what disc so we've had a rummage around and we've got various in our pile of discs that we've we've we bought some jag dvd units and they had we've got one of the jag yeah. ones in it and that 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 will work in it so if you find an old jag xf the dvd players are different and we'll show you that at the end of the video um but most of the discs have a date on them so this one here is 2018 and 19 and we got these off some dodgy internet site um now you can buy the discs online um and you need to go to navigation.com um, in fact, let's jump and do that now. Let's go on the computer and show that if you want to do it the proper way, where you get them from. So if you go to navigation.com, you should be able to select Land Rover. And then we're going to go to Range Rover here. And then it gives you a drop down. Now, bear in mind, you're selecting the year of your car, not the year of the navigation disc you want. So ours is 2006. And then you see it comes up with some options. So... We could get Western Europe here, um, and that is a bargain price of £169 plus postage. But note, this is the key to it. Note, it's only 2011 slash 2012 data, which is seven years out of date now. Now, some clever little toads have worked out that they use the same Denso navigation system on... Jaguars and on some Volvos and the Volvo one released newer map data so they've managed to take the map data off the Volvo and burn it onto a disc for Land Rover units 
Unis, users even. Right, so that is what we've got. So we've got that 2018 disc in the back of the car that we're going to try and fire into the player and see if it will read it. And hopefully we'll have even better than what you can buy off Land Rover through this website. So this is why aftermarket discs are potentially more attractive price, although I'm not condoning aftermarket stuff that's that's copied but it's actually the the data you're getting you don't want to be paying this much for seven year old data so right let's jump back in the car okay we are going to try and insert this disc we're back in the car now so we've got the it's still on unlock it's got no disc in it we've just taken it out so let's put that new disc in tyler and while you do that i'll go and watch the screen and see what happens so the screen at the moment may it may well freeze the touch screen like it did earlier um, right and it says please insert a map dvd now is it not having it tyler ah there you go and then sure enough now before we didn't have this road because there's a new housing estate opposite us here and so it didn't have the mallards and now we've got the mallards so we now know we've got a new uh, disc in there so that should all work now um, now, interestingly, if you go, let's just swap screens here, let's go to telephone and then go back to navigation. All right. You still got the off-road navigation because um, that's just looking at the GPS. So everything seems to work um, as it did before and we've upgraded the disc. Right, now what happens if you put that new disc in and it doesn't work? Right. Let's jump back into the back and have a look at the options you've got there. So you've now got two options, right? Now, if it's not reading the disc, you've either got a faulty disc, and, and, and they can be a bit temperamental, especially these copied ones, or you've got a faulty DVD player, or it's a bit of both, right? So there are two things you do. So let's focus, focus. Focus, and I've been drinking, Tyler. Let's focus on the DVD player. So what you've got in there is you have got an optical pickup head that is reading the data. Now, they can get dust on them, especially in the back of where it's located. And these cars are getting old. I'm doing my maths quickly in my head. 13 years old. So, right, open that, that DVD cleaner up. So there's various ones you can buy on eBay and what have you. And basically, they seem to fall into the same sort of category. But basically, they've got little brushes stuck on the disc. So if I zoom in here, you might be able to see these little white marks. And this has got like loads of... Apparently, it's supposed to create this awesome vortex or something. And it's supposed to, like, clean it. And I don't know if I'll be able to get it. But if I tip it sideways, there you can probably just about see there's a little bit of... So these are going to go in and they're going to tickle the head and knock any dust off and... And it's all going to be brilliant. So you can demonstrate putting that in, Tyler. So it won't read it. So, yeah, we've still got the ignition on at the front there. We've still got the screen. It's now going, it's having a hissy fit now. It's saying there's no disc in it. We're going to put that in and we should hear it go. It should be spinning up. I'm trying to clean that and spinning it round then it'll say invalid disc or something and then i think that's long enough tyler i think it needs to be in there for long and we can put that back to unlock you have to put it across to lock it doesn't it doesn't start whirring too much until you've locked it right so that's one option the other option then is cleaning the disc so there's a couple of options um we've used the alcohol wipe before and just put that on and give that a clean or you can buy these sort of cd restoring kits this is one we bought but again if you're buying a new disc it should be all right but if you've got a second hand disc try putting some of this sort of and it's like a cream that you sort of polish the disc with so one or other or both of those should get you up and running now if neither of those get you up and running it's an you you've tried a couple of discs you probably need to look at this dvd player now be careful because you will look on ebay and you will see cheap jag xf dvd players now if you just hold that so we can see the front of both of them and you'll you'll think well that's the same look it's got the unlock unlock button 
It's a little... No, it's, it's, I think it's indistinguishable, isn't it? They look the same from the front. But Tyler's going to show you how to take your nav unit out now and show you why it's different. Right. What tools do we need to... Oh, he's got his socket set. No, we're not going to need this immediately because I've already loosened them. Ah, uh, you've already loosened them. But what size was it when you did do it? It was a... It was. It was a so, yeah, a 7 millimetre socket you can get. And so is there two on each side, is there? Yeah, two on each side. And they're, they're little little bolts Tyler's going to show us now. But he's loose on them to make the video a little bit quicker. You haven't got a lot of room. I did have a look if you could remove the bracket. And I couldn't see an easier way of doing it. It looks like this this is the best way. It's not too hard. A ratchet spanner might, might work for some people. If you wiggle the DVD unit to take the weight off the screw, does that make it a bit easier, Ty? No. <laughs> Tiny bit. Tiny bit. Oh, oh, someone's looking for me. Right, so we've got two there, and then there's two on the back side there. So we'll get those loose, and then we'll come and join you when we slide it out. So there are the screws there. The bolts, sorry. There you go, that you've got out. So we should have four of those. Um, and then when you've got those out, you can slide the slide the unit. Now the wires are quite long, which is good. Now let me get the torch over here so we can get this. So careful, don't bend the wires too much there. Um, but you've got a series of connectors there. So the, do you want to take the aerial off first? So you've got to push the top of that one in. Tyler's having to reach over there. And that should just release the... Give it a wiggle. Push it in at the top. Always fighting, yeah? Always fighting. <laughs> Maybe try the others first. I oh, know the other easier. The other one's easier. Right, now that one, you've got to do a tricky little thing, haven't you, Tyler? you got a little... you got to, like... Move that cam over. Oops. Right, yeah, just... Oh. And then that comes out, yeah. This one's easy. Easy, push that little blue tab. Right, try that one now. Let, let me let me try and let me try and assist there you you. oh there you go wouldn't you? right so that's right now if you look at that unit there you see there the connections on the back of the one you need but if you compare that to the one you can get from a cheap for a jag you'll notice that on the back they're totally different so if you're looking for another dvd player you need the one on the bottom of the picture there now we're just going to open the two because they're both made by Denso. Let's look at the labels on the top there, Tyler. So they both say they're made by by Denso, don't they? They're both Denso products. So let's have a look if the drive mechanism is the same. And it may be you could, if yours isn't working, you could buy a cheap Jag one and swap the swap the head over. So let's have a look if we can do that. Let's go to the workshop. All right, we've got the two units in the workshop here. Tyler's undone this one already, so he's going to do a super quick just show you. But we'll do a we'll do a detailed strip down on the next one. But this is what we're going to do. We're going to take it apart. You know, take that bit there off. And then, and then what we lifts out here. Let me hold it a bit. There we go. So what you've got is this chunk of electronics. Now this is a this is a, a two halves, two completely different halves. The top half, as you look at it, is the optical pickup unit, which is the DVD optical drive, um, and that's completely separate, although joined together, to the electronic circuit board, which is the car. So what I'm interested in, and it might, I might be on a wild goose chase because I haven't looked at this, is whether that optical pickup unit off these cheap Jag XF DVD players, can we swap that? Hold on, which one's which now? So this this is the L322 one. Can I take this, throw that away, and use one of these later, newer um, optical pickups off this one? So right, Tyler's going to show us how to strip this one down, which is basically the same construction. So you've got a series of little screws under the bottom that he's taken out already to save us some time and then there you've got to pop the little tabs off so there's some little tabs here 
And that gets that little front panel off. All right. And then look what sort of construction. Then we should be able to force that bottom out. That doesn't look too bad. It's got some little sort of earthing contacts. Oh, sorry, I've just flicked the camera. Oh, there we go. You've probably got to lift it off fairly square. That's it. Yeah. So that's that. Um, and then he's got the same. It looks similar, doesn't it, Tyler? Yeah. So let's whip those four screws out there. So you've got the same four screws on a little. And then what we'll do is we'll reassemble it onto our drive um, and see if, if that does work. So we'll do a full test on it. Because I think we had a look and I think these are hard to buy on eBay now. I think a lot of people have had these L322 ones pack up. But the Jag XF ones seem plentiful and they'll be more... Oh, now that's got a totally... Oh, it might be, we might be on a wild goose chase. So that's got a circuit board. Let's have a look what the optical pickup unit looks like. So it doesn't look exactly the same. I'm starting to feel like this wasn't a good idea, but... <laughs> Ah, oh, now you've, you've, there's a cable there that's come out. Um, that should have been released. I may have had this one apart before. Now that should have been in that little connector at the back here. But let's carry on and see what the optical pickup unit looks like. We may have to do a more detailed. It's all got to come out. Right, we'll undo a couple more screws. Yep, so unfortunately my my plan has failed so yeah if you look at the ribbon cable the ribbon cable in there is right at the back relative to the cd slot the one here is a different cable right at the front the bracketry is this looks different so unfortunately you can't even make um swap swap those bits over so good luck if you need to find a an l322 dvd driver that's not working um you have to look on eBay. I expect they're a fortune new. I'll, I'll have a look and put the part number for the drive at the bottom in the comments below. I'll look it up. Right, I think that's all we can, all the wisdom we can share for uh, L322 Satnavs, isn't it, Tyler? Good luck with that. If you've got any questions or comments or advice, put them in the comments below and then share them with everybody. All right.